three, two, one, and we are live. What's up, CP family? Chad here with Andrew, Tie Breaker Series 129. Today, I welcome you guys to join us in a discussion about the stroke, getting really specific, really specific to tennis. Um, we're still going to be talking about mental training, but specifically talking about how mental training can be incorporated with the stroke. And I invite you guys to kind of look at it from a little bit different angle here, because normally the stroke is looked at very technically, very, very from a very technical standpoint. Everyone's working on technique, and we do. There is mental training out there to help dial in technique. You know that is a thing, and we have. Um, tools, you know, that, that that for those that have been on our programs, there's tools that help with the technique and everything. But we're, we want to look at this from a different perspective, go a little bit beneath the beneath the surface, um, look at it from a more um, broader broader perspective, not so nitpicky and not so focused on the technique, and just a, another way to kind of look at the stroke and what's really going down. And when it comes to the stroke. Why well, it can be really challenging, especially going from the practice court to the match court, which we, we talk about a lot, is there's really two different dimensions of the stroke that almost appear to be opposite and is very challenging um, to, to flip back and forth between these aspects of the stroke. These, you could call it an energy behind the stroke or you could call it a mentality into the stroke. And we're going to just shed some light on this. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. We'll see where it goes. We'll see how, um, cause it can go a lot of different directions, but we'll start with kind of pointing out these two polarities to the stroke. Um, and you, you can, if you observe, you know, anyone playing tennis, you see this come out, you see this come out in matches, in points and in the stroke itself. And these two opposite polarities, these two opposite sides of the spectrum, um, let's let's describe them a little bit. You know, one in one way, you're you're you need to be really intense and active with the stroke, and in other ways, you need to be very um, flowy, letting it just come out, letting it be natural, and letting it not really forcing it. And so sometimes you need to go back and forth between those two things, and that can be really really challenging. And so um, let's let's shed some light on this. Um, just so the audience can kind of look at strokes a little bit differently, a little bit outside of the realm of just technical. Yeah. Um, well, all the emphasis is usually on the technique. And if you really think about it, like we were talking about this the other day, that like technique is almost this like uh, reverse engineering of doing something where like people would watch a stroke and be like, okay, what's the best way to do it and try to almost like reverse engineer make something happen. When in reality, like the the efficiency of your technique is really just how how closely is your mind and body that connection, the mind body connection, like how 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 much is your mind and body in the same exact place? And so you were you were mentioning this on one side we have intensity, on the other side we have kind of ease or relaxation. Um, I almost like to think about it as like your, phys your physicality, your body, and then your mentality, the mind. And so if you just think about um, what an easy way to think about it is like when an athlete's in a match and they have, they have a pretty easy shot and they choke a lot. So the mind is in the future. The mind is already thinking about the outcome. And they're usually thinking in terms of this is a shot I should make. Okay, so there's, there's already this pressure with failing and everything like that, but the mind is really in the future. And so when the mind is disconnected from the body like that, the body goes into this state of stress. And when your body's in a state of stress, it, it contracts, it closes up. And so the physicality goes intense in the wrong way. It's this, it's this tightening. And obviously everyone knows you, you're going to play worse when you're tight. So when the mind and body are not in the same place, there's, there's, there's this, everything just turns into a trying. And then we try to turn that trying up and we try to try harder and try harder and try harder. When in reality, that's not solving anything. It's just kind of deepening the problem. So I like to think about it as, as um, 
connecting the mind and body, bringing the mind and body together. And so when they're in unison, they're going to function way better. So with the physicality, it's about increasing the actual intensity of it. And so, for example, let's say, let's just say you're doing a drill. A lot of times your attention is, is, is always on what you're, where you're trying to put the ball, like what you're actually trying to do. When in reality, like you're not really in control of that. What you're in control of is your physical body. So your attention and increasing the intensity of your attention, bringing your attention like more to a singular point, that attention should be on your physical body, not on where you're trying to go. When in reality, when someone says to try harder or to, or to focus or to increase the intensity, again, they just try to do the outcome with a greater level of effort, but really you're just increasing the level of strain, increasing the level of tension and stress. So on one end, when we're trying to increase intensity, when we're on that side of the polarity, attention on the physical body and almost um, bringing that more to a point, like feeling the actual intricacies of what you're doing. And that's where we should be directing our intensity. And the other side of the spectrum, the relaxation, the ease, um, is way more of a non-physical thing or way more of a mental thing. And um, you know, on this side of the polarity, the way I like to think about it is like, the more you, um, the more you allow yourself to be exactly as you are, essentially kind of this passive role and, and passive kind of gets a, a bad connotation here, um, but it's like allowing, allowing it, you, yourself to be just as you are, allowing yourself to be where you, at, where you are in your process. Um, because again, the mind, the mind gets lost in, in the past and the future. And so when we're in the past and the future, the mind and the body kind of get disconnected and we enter that state of stress. So when we truly allow ourselves to be exactly where we're at, the mind begins to calm down and even on a physiological level, your nervous system starts to unwind. The parasympathetic nervous system, you know, kicks on and you, you begin to relax. And obviously everyone's better when they, when they play relaxed. So it's more of identifying like not just the polarities of intensity and relaxation, but I think because everything is outcome driven, both of these get misconstrued. And so the intensity starts to get drip. Well, first of all, there's only an emphasis on intensity. You know, meditation and relaxation is something that's relatively new to athletics and something that is blowing up at light speed. So almost all of the attention has been on intensity and intensity has simply been going in the wrong direction. It's been going out of the present moment. It's been, I'm trying to create that outcome. And so all, you're, not, you're not focusing on what's actually causing that, the efficiency of your physical movement. And so the more your mind is here with your body, the stronger that mind-body connection is and the more fluid or efficient your stroke is going to be, essentially, technically. I don't know, that's the way I see it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, a lot of people, they look at these polarities and they kind of um, see it as one or the other. They kind of be like, all right, like we need to amp it up a little bit or like, man, like we need to chill like we're either one or the other and like and, and depending on the tournament depending on the match or, or whatever depending on the point you you'll find that you're either you need to, you need to do one of those more and what what we what we found is you really it's about merging them it's about doing them both you know it's about doing them both kind of at the same time first you have to recognize recognize it then you have to learn how to be able to flip through it and then you can kind of start doing them um, both at the same time and you know at CP th there's a lot of different ways you can do it but so, so, uh, just some of some of the practices that we do at CP is when we do fitness we get really intense and we get really present in the body doing very intense exercises but very safe and very exercises that you can that you can max out without hurting yourself or injuring yourself or damaging yourself. And we really try to increase the intensity in that and increase the presentness in the body with that. And so they're really learning how to increase the intensity. And then when the exercise gets really hard or it's like really painful, we, we, we train them to relax into that. 
So you start from a very intense activity and you try to relax into the intense activity. Another way we do it is with like a meditation where you start with a very relaxed activity and we try to slowly get in, intense. And some of our um, mental tools and some of our visualization exercises can get really, really intense even though they're sitting with their eyes closed in a calm state. And these are just some practices to start to get in the, get in the middle and get, get these things in uni union, get the mind-body connection really, really strong. So when it comes to the court, you're absolutely relaxed and absolutely intense at the same time. You're intense, but you're not tense. You're relaxed, but you're not lax. Like literally think of Yoda with his lightsaber. That's what I'm talking about here. Like very relaxed, but very intense. That's, that's what you want to be on the tennis court. And it starts with being able to do that with your stroke and getting reps with your stroke in these states. Yeah, absolutely. And just like you were saying, we, we speak of them as polarities, but really the way polarities work is it's like two sides of the same coin. You know, if they're two parts of a whole and the point really is to interconnect them and be able to do them simultaneously. Um, Yoda is a great example of that. Um, but yeah. Or yeah, martial, really martial arts masters, like they, 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 they're, they're so, I mean, Roger Federer too, all the, all the great players, like they're, they're really doing these, but um, martial arts is like an extreme example because of the physical danger involved where it's very intense, but like relaxed. So like think of Bruce Lee, think of Yoda, you know, obviously all the great tennis players master it because tennis is very unique where the dynamic of the point, how, how the points are played and just the nature of the athletic movement. It's not like you're, you, you can't hit it as hard as you can because it's, it needs to be a little bit more flowy. It's got to be within the context of, of your natural stroke. So it's got to be intense, but it's got to be natural. And so this is just another way to look at it you know, outside the realm of technique, what's the energy um, behind these strokes? What's the mentality behind these strokes? And what's kind of really going down at, on, a, on a deeper um, layer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I, if you've listened to these high records, you hear me talk about being outcome-oriented all the time. And, you know, just like with intensity, if we're, if we're being too outcome-oriented, if we're too driven by, you know, trying to create an outcome that we desire, the intensity is going to increase the level of stress. It actually works the same way. You can think of a time when, you know, it was a third set tiebreaker or something and you were trying to relax. Again, if we're trying to relax because we think it's going to give us a better outcome, it has the same exact effect on the system. You begin to feel this subtle pressure within you that can almost feel worse than, than, the, than when we're trying to increase our intensity. So really when we when we become present, when we bring the mind back here into the present moment and link it with the body, we are in control of our intensity. We are in control of how, how much looseness or how much ease that we're playing with. Yeah, I love it. And this is something that we'll be, we're going to be talking to, talking about a lot more in the future. You know, we've been hard at work in the recording studio, getting some tools out that are going to be able to help athletes do this because it can it, it's it's very challenging and it's a repetition thing in a lot of ways so look forward to getting those out to you guys soon hope you enjoyed the tiebreaker let us know how you liked it um let us know what you want us to cover next time and we'll see you on the next one peace <laughs>